All right, today's video is about an alternate repair for a broken USB connector on, an, on the Akai MPK Mini. Um, anybody who owns one knows it's notorious. Right. The uh, project today, um, I'm not actually going to replace the USB connector directly. What I'm going to do is hardwire this onto the board. That'll give you a, long, uh, a more reliable connection over time that shouldn't fail, uh, certainly won't fail the way that these do. The, point of, um, reason, the other reason for this repair, this is the cheapest, least expensive repair that you can do in the shortest amount of time. Um, without any more, I'll, I'm going to pause this video, open it up, and get down to it. All right, I uh, thought I'd stop this video as I got halfway through disassembling this board. Hopefully you can see that. There's all this brown goo up here on the board. I doubt that came from the factory. More than likely something was spilled in here, so I'm also going to have to clean that up. Just thought I'd point it out. Um, what am I going to clean it out with? I, I don't know. Uh, a couple of Q-tips, some rubbing alcohol, nothing really stronger than that. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if this is really important to show you or not. This is a, uh, a cap full of rubbing alcohol Q-tip. I'm just rubbing it on whatever that brown schmutz is. And she is definitely coming off pretty quick, so I'll, just, I'll keep doing that for another five or ten minutes till it's clean. You don't need to watch me. All right, well, all right, I cleaned off the board, but uh, I hope you can see that. I'll hold it and maybe it'll get some focus going on. But this is probably one of the worst connector breaks I've ever seen. Only one ground pad is left and none of the traces to the USB connector. So it's a good thing that I just randomly chose this one to do the, uh, the wire repair on because a, a USB connector repair on this would look pretty ugly. You'd see uh, you know, a handful of wires shooting around the board. Um, Anyway, I'll get on with that, and I'm going to show you some close-up videos of, of where to do it. I, I still have to clean up this connector and remove any bits of traces that are hanging in the air so that they don't potentially short others. Uh, that's done by scratching it with a razor blade. Okay, I, you saw that in the other video, so I don't have to go into that here. I'll come back when I'm ready to put the wire on. So, yeah, as long as I'm here, I thought I would show you um, removing the wire safely. It's it's a little hard. I mean, it, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You want a, a razor blade on there and cut the insulation away, or you can very carefully try to get that with a pair of pliers. Um, there's other tools and strippers. I have one of these, but this is uh, this one's a little bit light duty. It might break. So what I'm going to use is this old uh, vintagey kind of wire cutter. It's been around for 80 years, and I just put it on there lightly, and I'll spin a few times. And that'll cut through the uh, the outer, and hopefully I don't do it too hard, and I don't nick the inner wires. All right, so there's a nice strip there, and this outside braiding. Uh, we're we're not going to use it. We're going to cut that away as well as the the foil on the inside, and because this is a USB cable, you've got the standard colors. Uh, 5 volts is red, black is ground, and green and white are, are data, but I'm not sure which one is plus and minus, but I will reference that before the, uh, the video is done so we get everything hooked up right. Okay, bye. Now, I don't know how important this part of the video is, but I thought you might want to see um, how I determine what points on the board to solder onto. I mean, I, I had some wishful thinking because I saw these four connectors down there and I thought that they were an alternate USB connector, but they're not. They're unrelated. Um, I took a little piece of sandpaper, rubbed it on the connectors, rubbed it on the connectors real well so that when I put a probe on it, it's going to make good contact and I don't have to fight to find it. I set, my meter on, uh, set my meter on ohms mode and it beeps when you get continuity. And one of the first pins I'm going to look for, uh, I'll just do one and you'll figure out how to do the rest. 
I'm looking for the 5 volt line. The 5 volt line happens to be here. An alternate way to do this might be to solder might be to solder a wire onto the back so you can actually see it a little bit better. Okay, and you'll see that the 5 volt from the USB goes through a fusible link and directly to the input pin on the 5 volt regulator on the uh, on the board, which is probably what you'd expect. Um, and sometimes these regulators go bad, but I'll, I'll get to that in another video. I do sell those. All right, I'll get back when I've got all the pins marked out, and I'll show you a bigger diagram. All right, when I said cheap repair, I meant cheap repair. This is a typical USB cable that, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to pay 5 or $10 for this in the store, but don't, here's a little secret, go to, like, probably any yard sale on the planet, uh, over the weekend and somebody will give you one of these or sell you a whole box of them for a dollar. All right, and if the length isn't long enough you can always just get yourself an extender and it'll run a little bit longer. So we're going to cut it and leave a little bit of wire on the other end because you might actually have a use for that later. And that leaves you with this. And the next thing is to strip off the end. And let me show you that in the next sequence. I broke that because I thought I wanted to get a good stripping sequence because sometimes these don't always go well. Okay, that worked really well. But I want to take a little bit more off of that. And you do want to take a look and make sure you didn't nick any of the wires down there at the, at the cut. And that looks good. And uh, USB consists of four different color wires. Now the red is always power. The black is ground. And the green and white are the data signals. Um, the ground is a shielding that runs through the cable to reduce noise, and you can just cut it out. It's not, it, it's not necessary when we solder on to the board. So I'll do that and see you in a bit. All right, and of course, uh, like anything else, you need to, to tin the ends and get them ready to apply to the board. And you're going to want to cut those pretty short, like less than a sixteenth, maybe more like a thirty-second of an inch. Just want a little bit exposed. Uh, the shorter these wires are, the less opportunity for a for a short circuit exists. So I'm going to go in and plug them onto the board now in case I. Uh, didn't mention it, there are four points on the board that we're going to solder to, and I'm going to zoom in for the next segment. And hopefully this is uh, clear enough to see. And I'm going to put a, a piece of paper over the board to, to protect the contacts, but and the weight is to hold it in place. And there are four points on the board that you're going to attach your wires to. And you definitely want to have fresh solder on there so they're nice and receptive to the wires that come on because you, you don't want to overheat. You don't want to overheat that board. Ground is black and it's out here on CN3, the first pin. Red is power. Oh, you know what? I forgot one very, very important step. And I'm glad you were here to see me do it, so you don't do it also. Before 
before we start soldering, well, before we start soldering, you want to feed it through the side of your casing. And that's because the, the end is too big. And if you had soldered that all up, you would have had to chop the casing to get the wire through. I'll just put that to the side and go back to soldering. I don't know how many hundreds of times in my career I've done that. You solder something up and you gotta take it all apart. Red 5 volts goes to the top side of this fuse. There's actually a little fuse on the circuit board. It's called FB1. The white one attaches to the uh, resistor in the center. And the green one attaches to R2. There's a diagram. And bigger photos on the website. Yeah, that's it. And give it a little tug. And the next thing, obviously it's going to be to put it in the case, but before I put it in the case, now that we've soldered the uh, the wires in place. I'm going to go walk this over to a computer, plug it in, and make sure we get the flashing pattern. So stand by. Okay, um, from the last video I showed you that there is a, a pattern of lights that are going to flash if the connector is properly installed and the, and the board is working. So there we go. Okay, there you go. It's uh, two flashes and then a solid on red light. It again. Boom. Okay, so we're good. Go back to the table and put the thing together. Okay, I said I just missed a very important step. Um, when you cut the, uh, the covering off of this wire there's, and you clip back the shield, there's going to be a little bit of bare shield extending past the end. And if that hits the circuit board, it can potentially uh, short out and permanently damaged, so I just I wrap the end just a little bit of electric tape. Um, I'm, you could shrink wrap it or whatever you want to do, but you just gotta make sure that that shield shielding wire is not exposed and that there's no risk. Okay, good. All right, now I'm back and I'm struggling with a new tie wrap in a different orientation. I know that I want the. Uh, top of that tie wrap to be on the opposite side of the board where it has space to breathe. That's what I'm looking for. Alright, you're down, you're down, you're down. Make sure that wire is rounded smoothly. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's 500 other ways to put the strain relief on the board and I'm sure that there will be some other video that will pop up in a month showing how to do this better. But this is a way to get it done. Okay, And because that wire is routed around these, uh, these capacitors, it's got a lot of natural strain relief on it and it's not going to put any stress on the connections. All right. I'm going to test that theory and go for broke and just mount this guy in here. Uh, let me stop this and back the video out just a tad. Something about this camera, it won't let me zoom in or zoom out once uh, it's recording. Showing you the whole process that way you won't 
think you're insane if you have to struggle for any reason. That was all it. I had to I had to bend back on that wire a little bit to get it to to sit. Make sure the video is still in focus. All right, I'm gonna start putting the screws in. Same thing as last time. Screws in. Don't actually tighten them down until you get them all placed. You'll notice the uh, the screws stick to my screwdrivers. I, I magnetize most of my drivers so that I can get that to happen. I'm sure you don't need to see me put the rest of the screws in. I'll pause it and go on. All right, all the uh, screws have been tightened down. And I'm also going to want to do one more thing, and that's put a little bit of strain relief right there at the at the corner. Just make a loop. Sure, you got a little bit of breathing room on everything before you tighten down on this. Pull it tight. Sometimes I'll even crank it with the cutter. Get that last leg to click. There you go. Now, you can see there's no way that it's going to pull through there and, and rip off the board. All right, so there's your strain relief. The rest of it's just uh, putting the unit back together. I don't think I need to film that, so uh, I'll skip that and we'll go to testing. Anyway, briefly the assembly. Pull back from the round clip. Slide the connector loosely under there. Push up on the brown clip, locks it in place. Come back. And the only thing we have to contend with now making sure our wire is definitely out of the way. Power, why do I say power when I do this? I'm the only one here videotaping it. I'm not even taping it anymore. Videotape went out, what, 10 years ago now? It's the last time anybody ever taped anything. Okay, I only put two in just to make sure everything fits, everything fits smooth. Strain relief is definitely straining. You can hang that thing. Now, you're gonna look at this and say, well, isn't that a really short cable? I don't like that, it's too short. There's, you know what? There's this magical thing called a USB extender. You can extend to your heart's content. Okay, let's go test it. All right, just like last time, using the Kimi of the Art, Capture, are you seeing that? Yeah, hope you, hope you are. Yeah. Back off a little bit there. Back off a little bit there. Oh, it's funny, it's not letting me draw. Okay, I got my connection to QMIDI art. Log is running. And 
there. You can see I'm getting many, many communications data going through. Just like always in And that's it. So that's the wired version of the repair, where you'll have a short leash coming out of your unit. Now, essentially all this really is doing is replacing your connector on the side, giving you something a little bit more durable. If this ever goes bad, you would just cut the wire and put another end on that or splice into it. You certainly could do that easily without having to, to open up the machine again. So I'll... Uh, the rest of it is just putting the knobs on. It's not even worth showing. But anyway, that's another option if you're really cheap and you need it up right now today. I'm sure you could dig a USB cord out of your closet and do that repair I just showed you. Um, if, if I weren't videotaping it, maybe 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Goodbye.